I made my own remote controlled fireworks igniter and in this video I'll show you how I did it. Every year our friends and family gather together on the 4th of July for food, fun, and fireworks. For years I used the squat, light, and run technique, but it didn't provide much continuity for viewers. It had to be a better way. Before we go farther, I just want to say this video is not a tutorial. Also, working with fireworks and high current systems is potentially dangerous. If you decide to do something similar, Please be cautious and find someone with knowledge and experience to help you. Also, before working with fireworks, check your local laws and ordinances. In the end, you're responsible for your own safety and the safety of those around you who may be affected by what you do. I started thinking about how I could automate igniting the fireworks. The biggest unknown was how to ignite a standard firework fuse. Looking around on the web, I found Nichrome wire. Nichrome is a resistive alloy that has a high melting point and it stands up to oxidation well. To use it for igniting fuses, you simply make a coil of it, attach it to the fuse, pump some current through it, and it goes red hot like an old school bulb filament. If it gets hot enough to light the fuse, perfect. With Nichrome chosen as the igniter, I needed something to provide large amounts of currents for short periods. I happen to have an old 12 volt marine battery that is used to doing that sort of thing. There are probably more modern battery options that would be smaller, lighter, and more convenient. Sometimes the best tool is the one you already have, right? In order to automate this, I needed some remote connectivity and some sort of controller. Previously, I stocked up on low-cost ESP8266 controllers. ESP8266 is a microcontroller from Expressive that can connect to Wi-Fi, and the area I shoot fireworks from is in range of my Wi-Fi extender, so I chose to use the ESP8266. ESP8266 has GPIOs that I can turn on and off programmatically. However, Microcontroller GPIO pin can't deliver anywhere near the amounts of currents that Nichrome needs. For that, I needed relays. A quick search on Amazon found some opto-isolated relay boards that can handle my current need. Boards have four relays each. Thinking about how many fireworks I might want to launch in a show, I decided to get three boards for 12 total output channels. I would use these to light the multi-shot aerial boxes. I would find out later that I couldn't actually afford 12 multi-shot boxes. So expensive. Also, the ESP8266 didn't have enough usable GPIOs to drive 12 channels, so I later added two shift registers chained together, giving me the capability to drive 16 outputs, though I still only use 12. With any system with the potential for high current, or long wires that can potentially develop shorts, I wanted to be fused to prevent things from melting and fires and such. At first, I used some wires with inline fuses, but later I found a 12-way fuse block with LED indicators that I liked better. It makes the project somewhat neater, and it gives easy access to the fuses. With the fuses removed, you can test the relays by watching the LEDs without heating up the nichrome. The final piece of the hardware puzzle was getting power to the microcontroller. For this, I used a buck converter to drop the 12 volts from the battery down to around 5 volts the microcontroller wanted. With all the pieces acquired, it was time to put it all together. The hardware together, I needed a way to communicate remotely with a controller. I decided to use MQTT as an interface. I already had an MQTT server set up, so there was some convenience there. Also, it let me be able to easily push commands to the controller before I built an actual user interface. For the controller firmware, I used MicroPython, again for convenience and familiarity. I wrote a custom state machine to manage connecting to the MQTT server, handling the incoming commands, and reporting status back to the server. I built in an ARM disarm mode to make it a little safer to be around the controller when it was actively being used. I used an LED to indicate when the system is in the disarm state. So if the LED is off, I assume the system is either armed or in some unknown state which might make it not safe to be around. For the user interface, I chose to create a web application with a bit of a futuristic controller look. I created the UI with web components using lit, no pun intended. The logic is again controlled by a state machine, this time using the xState library from Stately. While this video is obviously not a tutorial, the code for both the controller and the UI is available on my GitLab account for referencing. You can find the links in the description. So that's how the system was built. Let's talk about how I use it for my informal shows. Typically, I get the multi-shot firework boxes and screw them down to a wooden pallet. This keeps them from moving around when them or their neighbors are exploding. It also lessens the chance of the other box fuses falling out of the igniter loop. 
I generally water down the palette and the surrounding grass before I do this, in case some hot residue lands there. I then place the controller nearby and shield it with some high-tech shielding. That would be milk crates and plywood. I take the igniter cables and run the fuses through each loop of nichrome. All of this is done with the controller not powered and the fuses removed. Once all the fuses are connected to igniters, I power on the system and I make sure I have good connectivity to the Wi-Fi. Then I install the fuses and wait for enough darkness for good viewing. When darkness falls, I pass the tablet off to some lucky youngster who really, really wants to launch fireworks. When everyone has been alerted and the area is clear, we press and hold the arm button for five seconds and that arms the system. Then all that's left to do is press each fire button corresponding to each igniter in the order desired. The show is over, tapping the disarm button disarms the system. When we see the disarmed LED go on on the remote system, I know it's safe to approach. I go pull the igniters back and then soak the spent firework boxes with water, but out any remaining hot spots. The remote controller has really boosted enjoyment of our celebrations. It gives inexperienced people a chance to shoot fireworks safely from a distance. And it provides continuity for the show. Definitely a fulfilling project. For the future of this controller, we'll probably make a more permanent PCB. The jumper wire wiring is a bit of a mess, especially with the addition of chip registers. Some other thoughts include some sort of scripting support to be able to make like a one-touch show that kicks off relay channels firing in some order with no delays. People really like pressing the buttons though. What about you? Have you done something similar? Have ideas for cool enhancements for this project? We'd love to hear from you in the comments below. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching.